Well, I'm here, Wayne, and I am on time. This is bizarre. This is not normal for me. I know, admittedly, I had the wrong screen up when I was starting, but uh, I was almost late uh, you know, chatting to Freeze on Facebook, but I'm here now, and as usual, at the top of the show, I would like to give a massive Patreon shout-out to my third tier of our Patreons, Wayne, Reese, Tim, and Chris. Thank you very much. Without you, these shows wouldn't happen, and it's episode 20 of the Conquest Show, which thankfully doesn't come with much. It comes with um, the third, I think, the third and final container, which means that... Um, there's not much to go through, but we do have a bit of a folder rundown. We did this last time on issue number 10, um, and I think at the time there we said maybe every 10 episodes, which means there'll be eight of these shows throughout the Conquest video videos where we will um, come across... Um, it says 17, change the time of the Tuesday game. Hang on a minute. Did I do? Have I done something wrong there? Let me let me just have a look at this. Hang on. Wow. That's better. There we go. We got it. <laughs> oh dear. We'll we'll get it right. We'll get it right. Ah oh dear. Yep. All right. Okay. So anyway, as I was saying, we're gonna get uh, eight of these kind of video rundown, these folder rundowns. Um, technically, after twenty issues, uh, this folder is technically full uh, because we know that um, we are going to have. Um, four folders over the course of Conquest magazine and that means that uh, well four four divided by 80 is 20 so uh, yeah we'll uh, we'll have uh, 20 episodes per folder which theoretically could be that um, we're going to be able to um, let me retry the connection there uh, we could have a folder uh, per um, Per section, because we have the four sections in the book. We have the uh, the collect, the build, the paint, and the play. Um, so we could mean that each folder gets each section, which could be good. Um, I think we'll have a look when it comes to it. I did mention this uh, when we were talking about folders another time. You see that this one is red, which would coincide with the red section of the book. Uh, perhaps if we have. Um, a blue, a yellow, or a green folder. Um, it'll probably have the same pictures, but it might have a different tint to it. Um, that would kind of confirm that there'll be each book has a different section, but you know, there's no guarantee. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll have a folder rundown of this show anyway. Anyway, so let me carry on with my usual announcements. Don't forget to send me your pictures to any of my social media that you can find in the description below or Wayne will no doubt do a fantastic job of popping them all into the chat uh, but you can find them all in the description below as well as usual Chris thank you very much for joining us today we're gonna have a look through uh, the folder and the book very shortly so yeah you can send me your pictures and if you have an Instagram account don't forget to let me know what it is and then I can pop you up on to my uh, Instagram story. And uh, as you may be able to see up in the top corner, maybe the Conquest Shows is the only one you see, I do have a Discord link. Um, you can copy the link that's written there on the Discord. Or again, Wayne will do a fantastic job of popping up the Discord keyword in the chat as well. And there is a link in the description, of course, as usual. Um, so yeah, lots of things going on there, and if you want to get your models popped on the show, Discord is another place where you can put it, but we also have lots of chats and various other bits and pieces down there, so feel free to jump in on that. It's been growing quite tremendously over the last couple of days, actually, it's been fantastic, so I'm really happy the way that has gone. Um, we have a, there we go. 
Uh, there we go. All right. So we go. We have a fact. We actually have people talking on Discord right now as well. But I can't get on with that because I've got a show to do. Uh, what else do I want? Oh yes, and of course Wayne has popped in the support and the tiers uh, for the Patreon if you want to help support the channel, which would be absolutely fantastic from tier one, which is a little as one dollar a month. So that will be fantastic if you want to do that. I think that's all of my uh, usual. In fact, there is uh, the other thing as well. It's, I don't always do it. Is my tags? I tend to stop doing this because not many people use it. Uh, the tags. Uh, be of OPS conquest if you want to just tag me and things that you want to see. Uh, or just the uh, the one above that, which is whip. There we go. Be of OPS life. It's just stuff. You can tag me in it and uh, show me what you got, which will be fantastic. So Chris and Wayne, I hope you're ready for this. We have a few people watching already. Uh, I do need to, as usual, just uh, reset the viewer counter because for some reason it never seems to want to work. Uh, Streamlabs has a funny way of just saying, you know what, not today, which really does my head in almost every single time now normally i managed to get this uh, done before the show and i was kind of bragging on discord um a little bit earlier saying ah i'm good i'm actually waiting for the clock to run down only this time it turns out that instead i was waiting for the clock to run down it's just i wasn't actually ready to wait for the clock to run down but anyway let's get cracking we have some people watching. We have people in the chat. Feel free. Let's have a look at issue number 20 of Conquest, which is the next, uh, the next Conquest, um, uh, the next Conquest show. Um, uh, so issue number 20, and as usual, whoop, get rid of that. Yep, I still regret doing it, but I've done it for the last 20 issues and I'm not going to stop now. So we jump straight in. There's plenty of, straight into the fluff today. Uh, successive chapters of Ultramarines. I do believe we've already had some, um, but um, <clears throat> yeah, 2.1. There we go. And uh, of course, I'm not going to go talking about where they fit in the folder because we are just about to go through the folder now. Um, so I will have a look where I need to go. Keep the front covers. Nah, I've, I've been throwing them away for the last 20, 20 issues. I'm not going to start now. So let's have a look. We have spacious issues 2.1. So we're going to have a look at this. So, uh, so ultramarine successor chapters. Who have we got? Fulminators, Black Consoles, Eagle Warriors, and the Nova Marines. The only one I've ever heard of is the Nova Marines. I don't uh, I don't know anything about them, but all I know is they're the only ones I know of. So, uh, yep. I feel that there's something missing off the uh, off the off the screen. No, maybe not. All right. Yeah, so Nova Marines and then we'll have a look across here. Some more of them. Um, we got Howland Griffins. I have heard of those before. Hawk Lords, Castellians of the Rift, and the Voyage Tridents. Now, all of these guys are probably on um, are probably on that big A2 poster if you've subscribed. So uh, I'm not so sure. Uh, keep them. You may still be able to get replacements for the ones you've thrown. Uh, there's 20 issues, to be fair. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm not too fussed. You know, they're all going in the folder. I'm not I'm not bothered about it. So we have Space Marine Chapters 1.6 where we're having a look at um honor badges. Um which funny enough, let me have a look at at this. Space Marine Chapters 1.1 Marines 2.1 2.1 yeah so we're having a look at the uh, honor badges now often a, a lot of this stuff is just fluff and uh, more for um, more for painting 
really so I mean they've got some really nice so you see these things here I see these bullets around on models all over the place and I don't know if I've got any to hand that have any bullets knocking around now when I was told that they were bullets and not just some dangly thing I never knew what what to do what to paint them so I've been painting them gold uh, anyway but it's quite nice in here it says this distinction is given to warriors who prove their ranged accuracy in combat now obviously that gives you a nice way of having to um, give your models a really nice bit of um, backstory if you want to make sure you know, perhaps especially in things like kill team and stuff which I know I rattle on about a lot in other shows um, but you know if you've got a sniper specialist you make sure that he's got one of these honor markings which would be kind of cool but uh, these badges are believed to have been fired from a bolter shell casing fired by Robute Gilliman which is kind of cool you know it means that you know there's got some history all of these bullet casings have got history but instead of painting them like a brass or a, a something like that you can uh, coat them in gold <clears throat> Uh, I don't know what's boo on uh, what's boo I don't know that's on discord that's distracting I'm going to ignore that now <laughs> I'll get back to it in a bit uh, yeah so uh, yeah so painting the bullets gold which is what I've been doing all the time but it's nice to see it here that you know they're supposed to be gold and then we have laurel leaves around and you can see why who has laurel leaves and who doesn't uh, which is kind of cool I like this this is more of a I mean, there's plenty of fluff here, but it's it's like having a look at your miniatures and seeing what the decoration's on it and why the decoration is there. There we go. We'll be back. There we go. There we go. We should be back. Let me let me just wait for the uh, internet to uh, catch up. There we go. All oh, right, so it actually, uh, right, so it caught up. I was just watching to see why, it, what was waiting so long. Okay, so yeah, now we're having a look at these guys. Um, I hope you didn't miss anything. If I if if I was talking about something for it to come back and all of a sudden it's just jumped, uh, let me know. Um, if I was in the middle of a sentence, because obviously I don't notice when it stops working, um, and then it jumps. So. Yeah, I seem to be starting to have some trouble with my computer again. Um, it looks like we might be on the uh, on the. Um, yeah, I'm not so sure. All right. So anyway, what I was saying, the Prime Helix about um, the apothecaries. Uh, yeah. So these I was expecting to have. Um, I did hear that these were made from the Emperor's armor entirely, but now here it just says it's got a fragment. Uh, we have Icon of the Death Watch now. Obviously, these aren't so much. This isn't so much a Space Marine thing, um, unless of course you were in the Death Watch at some point. So that's kind of cool. Um, service studs. Now these are the funny thing is the, uh, I see these lumps on Space Marines' foreheads all the time, and I never really fully understood what they were. Uh, and again, they're to record uh, 10, 50, or 100 years of service depending on the chapter's traditions. Although described in the Codex, the awarding of studs is not officially required. So, you know, driving a nail into somebody's head isn't necessarily needed, but uh, you could do. We disconnected again. Oh man, this is really doing my head in. Uh, I am watching the stream on my tablet with the delay that you guys have got so um, yeah you're just gonna have to uh, see about that um, uh, Jason Harris welcome to the show unless you're one of the world eaters they bang nails all the time yeah exactly yeah, <laughs> yeah. so yeah I mean the service studs I mean you know driving a nail three head isn't necessarily required unless of course you're a world eater but um, it's interesting to know, you know, that you've seen, you know, why they're actually there. 
And then we have Iron Skulls attached to the shoulder helmet who have attained the rank of Sergeant. Uh, the Iron Skull is usually displayed as a red heraldric device. Whatever that means, I have no idea. I think that's... Um, I mean, I play Blood Angel, so I don't have um, necessarily a um, Codex compliant chapter. I mean, they're loyal, but they don't necessarily follow everything for the Codex. So the Iron Skull is usually more white, I think. Um, yeah, they're usually white on uh, black background and stuff, but uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, purity seals, of course, are not honours, but rather blessings given by chaplains when Battle Brothers receives a seal. The chaplains chant litanies before affixing it to the Space Marine armour. Now, mm, this is this is unfortunate, because actually, um, it would be nice if they gave us a little bit more of an understanding of why purity seals are given. Uh, I can understand it's a blessing by a chaplain, but, you know, are they given because, uh, yeah, what what reason do they serve? Now, I know that they're a religious thing, but does some space marines require a blessing from a chaplain more than others? Um, so if they're not honours and they're not given to a, um, they're not given to a, a, a space marine as a as an honour thing. Um, why why are they given? Um, and it would be nice to have had a little bit of an explanation as to why, but uh, you know we can't have a cake and eat it. And like you said, we could we we could get them further on in the future. So um, yeah, uh, didn't they start as oaths of movement before the heresy? Uh, what the purity seals? Um, possibly. I don't really know much of fluff, to be honest. A lot of the fluff that I pick up is in this small, bite-sized format. So I don't, re I haven't read many of the books, so I couldn't tell you. But if anybody else in the chat knows, then uh, feel free to jump in on it. And so we're on to Space Marines chapters one point two, which um, uh, I know for a fact is a little bit further back in the book. Uh, where we have a look at the Codex Astartes itself, which was written by uh, Gualiman uh, after the heresy. Um, and we have a look at the first 20, um, the first 20, um, uh, well, they call them Astartes chapters, but obviously these were legions at the time. Um, two of which have been expunged from all records. Um, Nobody knows what happened to them, although a lot of people will say that um, th there's more of a meta explanation in terms of these kind of give you the ability to kind of create your own um, without, you know, incurring the wrath of the people that take fluff uh, far more seriously. Uh, all of the excommunicate traitorous ones are here. Uh, the Emperor's Children, the Iron Warriors, Night Lords and so on as well as all the loyal ones and the number that they were which is kind of cool and the Primarch down here so we've had some Primarch fluff in the magazine so far and here we go this is what I was talking about um, not necessarily Codex compliant most chapters stick rigidly to the organization laid down by the Codex Astartes for tactical roles and other processes including uh, chapter markings and so on Others, such as the Blood Angels and Dark Angels, follow general Codex doctrines, but maintain troops, tactics, and traditions that set them apart from their brethren, which was laid out in some of the older stories. Um, and uh, a small number of chapters are utterly different from the Codex and owe nothing to it at all. The most famous of these is Wayne's favourite, Space Wolves. The Sons of Rus have never followed the Codex of Stites, their strong-willed Primarch moulded his chapter very much in his own image, regardless of other influences and dictates. And that is pretty much all of the fluff that's in this book. <clears throat> and we're only three pages in, so, um, yeah. <clears throat> so, we'll have a look at the rest of it. Now, most of this is going to be basically an, a repeat of the scenery number three uh, of the armored container 
so it's exactly identical to the other containers and uh, barrels that we've already had. Uh, somehow I've managed to scroll up on the chat, so I'm going to have to move that for before we carry on. There we are. There is a bunch of that in the heresy books from the Space Wolves. Oh, about the Pirate Seals. <clears throat> and the painting part of this um, book is going to be pretty much the same as the other containers again. Um, scenery number three, only this time you're painting it red. And uh, you're dry brushing it with Bugman's Glow. So, I mean, we can pretty much skim this completely because if you really want to have a look at me slowing down and looking at it, you can see it in the um, episode where we got our first armoured container. I can't remember exactly which... There we go, we reconnected. Um, so, we should be back in time. I think I managed to stop. I think I managed to see that. Um that sucks it's just a repeat from the other mags waste of paper could have been put other stuff in yeah you could have done uh, genuinely you could have quite easily um maybe just put all of the three containers that we knew that we were going to be getting on one magazine and then filled the other two repeats with um with fluff uh, although some people were saying that perhaps it's because some people won't actually buy all of the magazines so they only they only want to give you what you want to see you know when it's due yeah i think i know what i mean all right and so we go on to the mission for this and this mission is two pages long as well it's a really thin magazine this time there really isn't much pages to it so i'm kind of glad because obviously going through the uh we're going through the uh folder as well after a full 20 page um magazine is going to be a nightmare but um yeah so the jewel of champions and we're quite light on models uh, we're still using the small board because uh, you don't start the don't start using the big one until 21 um and so uh, the holes of both the Rockbringer and the honor of ultramar are riven with battle damage as both ships approach corvon 2 as the Ultramarines prepare to disengage and launch their counter-attack on the planet's surface, the leaders of both forces clash in mortal combat. Yeah, uh, and so the Death Guard use Lord Feltius and his tainted cohort and fly five Plague Marines. And the Space Marines use Lieutenant Calcius, a Primaris Librarian, two Hellblasters and three Aggressors. I wonder which way that that's going to go. Um... It's using the flip side of the board, no container. Yeah, I was going to get to that in a second. Um, so, yep, we're using, yeah, we're using the uh, blank side. Uh, how to win, uh, eliminate a character for two victory points. Eliminate an infantry unit for one victory point. Be the first to player to eliminate an enemy unit is another victory point, which is uh, better known as uh, first blood in uh, the full rules of 40k. And that's for the Death Guard to win. The Space Marines want to eliminate Lord Feltius for three victory points, eliminate the Tainted Cohort for two, eliminate the Plague Marines for two, and be the first player to eliminate an enemy unit, First Blood, for one victory point. So we have, for the Death Guard, you have two, four, five, six, uh, plus seven for the First Blood, seven victory points available to you. Uh, for the Space Marines, Lord Feltius is 3, Tainted Cohort is 2, which is 5, Eliminate Plague Marines 6, 7, uh, and the sad uh, case of the Space Marines with First Blood have the ability to get 8 victory points. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I know it's close, but still, surely you want to be, uh, you want the ability to get the same amount of, uh, uh same amount are we still get disconnected are we still going this is really starting to do my head in with it jumping around like this right as always if you have missed something please let me know 
it's telling me that it is still live so there we are I am still live all right I don't know I don't know if I missed if it, if it jumped again I mean if I'm in the middle of a sentence please please feel free just to remind me what I was talking about so I can go back um, I think I need to figure out where my um, computer uh, is spending its time because uh, keep stopping like this is not helpful. I'm gonna do that. That might help. See if that helps. All right. Um, so we're going to go Corvan Two. The green sphere of Corvan Two looms large as the honor of Ultramar. Now, obviously, everything is kind of heading towards Ultra uh, Corvan Two, and so um, yeah. Oh, I see what's happening. I'm getting further and further behind on my life on my live stream. Um, so. Um, According to this, I, it, my stream's offline now. So, anyway. Alright, yeah, I don't know what's going on with my computer at the minute. But, uh, yeah, so everything's building up to Corvon 2, which is kind of cool. But, uh, yeah, in this, we start seeing... Um, we then learn how to set up your battlefield. So now we're, we're really starting to get into some of the finer... I would say the final rules of uh, 40k where you start doing um, where it's kind of showing you, you know, you've done the rules you know how to move your models you know how to shoot them you know how to kill each other now we're going to start saying how you actually play when you get to the table let's actually start playing this game from start to finish which will of course make a bit more sense next issue and it is there is a little bit of a, a sneaky peek at uh, on the back cover which we'll get to in just a second but yeah so you know it's it's about how to place terrain down so that you know if you're going to a friend's house there are rules about how to place the terrain so you can't you know you don't get um one side has all of the good stuff and the other side is just completely open and blank and you just get shot um and so how you know how to make it fair so this is uh, setting up the battlefield and then of course uh, once you've set the battlefield up uh, even if your friend still wishes to kind of make it heavy on one side and the other there is still a chance that you get to choose that side to play from when you roll off to decide who gets to deploy so that's kind of handy it's kind of cool so uh, this is awesome uh, so we're going to pop that in there and we're just at the end of the uh, at the end of the magazine now, and then we'll have a quick look through the folder as it's shaping up now. Uh, but before we do that, I'll just have a quick look at the back cover. Now, of course, we have the Corvon Two kind of thing. Uh, it's the same uh, back cover that we have had for the last three, four magazines now. Um, I can't remember exactly how many there's been. Uh, but we'll have a look at the reverse sides when on issue number 21 like I said we're getting into the nitty gritty rules and we get a actual copy of the full 40k core rules you know the rules where it tells you exactly how to move your models how to shoot them some of the special rules in terms of you know you've been able you have had them in the magazine format so you already know the rules about things like advancing and your weapon options and your weapon types um, your charging and your psychic phases and so on and so forth things like that as well as uh, I believe I always keep mentioning this every single week I mention about the core rules and I still have yet to remember to have a look for my copy of the core rules that I picked up when I got uh, yeah, what whatever box it was that I picked it up from, I can't remember. Uh, I already have one of those, and now I'll have another one. Um, but yeah, so you have a core cool reference sheet for all of the rules, all of the phases, all in one place, rather than needing to use the magazine. And we're of course going to get three more reavers to round off some army, some of your army. 
and uh, so that will give you a total of six in total and then we're going to get some astro granite debris no sorry astro granite I've got astro granite debris on my shelf we're gonna get some astro granite to texture your models which is uh, like a um, a, um, a, a urban debris kind of uh, basing material so you know dusty kind of material so we'll have a look at that and no doubt that will get applied to our um, conquest models that we've got going along here but in the whole, on the whole it will basically look similar to, to this guy here as a gray kind of dusty stuff so we will get on with that when that arrives and uh, of course yeah we'll have a look yeah this is the uh, what is astro granite debris it's the same thing it's just um i believe astro granite debris may be finer uh, it's a texture so i mean it's basically it's paint with grit inside it uh, one of them is coarser than the other and i can't remember which one's which so once we get the astro granite i'll be able to tell you which one's which and we can uh, have a look at the two this one is astro granite debris um, and I can't remember which one's which way round so we'll do that when that arrives and of course we have uh, I don't even need to show you this to be honest because we've already seen this twice now already um, which is the uh, the container sprue with the uh, single container three barrels and four boxes which actually at some point in the future I might even show you how I built uh, this so uh, and I might even paint one up so uh, there we are let's confuse Will thank you very much yeah that's gonna uh, be interesting <laughs> all right so let's get rid of that out of the way <sighs> The thing is, I know, I know that they're both Wayne's account. It's just a case of, is it both Wayne just playing around, or is somebody using Wayne's account? That's that's the uh, that's the uh, that's the trick, right? Okay, dokie. So issue number twenty, we are half an hour, just over half an hour into the show. So issue number twenty, we will have a look through the magazine. Uh, through the folder this technically is now full we have 20 issues in this folder um, technically this folder is now full we will have another three during the course um, so we're just gonna have to see what color the next folder is to determine exactly how it's gonna do so we'll see but anyway let's have a look through it um, I did rip the um, that one of these things it would be interesting actually to know I mean I think I'm gonna keep these as separate so one will be collect one will be build one will be paint and one will be play hopefully and I'm hoping that I might get some more of these because I ripped this one and um, yeah maybe I could just swap it out for if we get another set of these I'll just swap it out for a, a fresh one um, but we'll see um, we're just gonna have to see what happens so yes we have the history of 40k um, starting from you know just a basic understanding of what the 41st millennium is and uh, we'll have a look here yeah I do need to get some hole reinforcers that's for sure um, I'll I'll get around to it at some point so we're gonna keep an eye on these numbers and we'll just have a discussion about what we think might be filling its spaces I do remember in uh, the 10 issue uh, roundup we uh, had a quick look and we kind of made some guesses I can't remember what guesses we made so we will have to see but uh, issue number uh, history number one uh, uh, going into the Dark Imperium the 41st millennium and the Dark Imperium and the Empire <coughs> oh, excuse me I tell it let me grab a drink lots of talking you doubt it with Partworks you normally get one set of dividers and move them to other folders when the collection gets larger <coughs> that's fair enough and then in that case what I'll do is I'll just fix the one that I've got but um, I'm hoping that we should get a new folder either in the next delivery or what's more likely will be the delivery after that uh, because that will give us around about the same number of magazines um, 
to put straight into that folder as we had when we received the first issue if it's the next delivery after the yeah the next one next but one we have a history number two so we can see i mean if your numbers are going together we we start a history uh, and then go through to domains war zones battles and so on so we can have a look at the history section and we go history number one history number two where we talk about the rift history number three talking about the warp itself and we don't have history number four but we have history number five about the stc systems which is really cool there is a really good video actually about stc systems done by oh rats i've completely forgotten about what who it, who it is that did that one if uh, i did mention it to wayne so if you can remember who did it oh it was lutin number lutin zero nine uh, i might try and remember to put a um a what's it down so i bet they instruct us to split the pages between the two folders when we get the second folder possibly um, but I tell you what I'm gonna do is when I've got when I've got my second folder I will probably put build and uh, history and build into one and paint and play into the other one and that will help me just spread out the um, what's it and then as we get more and more I'm hoping they're gonna be different colors like I said if they if they're all red it doesn't really matter but um, if, if the next one's blue then obviously that will kind of confirm to me that one will be red one will be blue one will be yellow and one will be green so we'll see what happens and of course i will actually tell you how i do it when i do it because unlike a folder rundown after every 10 episodes um that will need to be done straight away and then as i'm going through the magazine each week i'll be putting it into the folder so so we're missing um history number four which i'm not sure what could fit between the warp and STC systems. Um, it could be possibly about the dark age of technology, perhaps. Uh, number six is the Horus Heresy, which ironically should theoretically be at the first because that's kind of what started everything off. Uh, and then from there, it goes straight into war zone. So we have no domains yet, which I imagine are going to be um, the various star systems of the uh, Space Marine. Um, chapters so I mean you've got Ultramar for um, the Ultramarines then you've got the Baal zip system for um, for the Blood Angels in their area um, and of course um, you've got the Rock um, Fenris um, and so on Underdog thank you for joining us so we skip domains and go straight into war zones at the minute and we do start with war zone number one war zone ultramar which is handy um at war zones number one defenders of ultramar so it's ironic that it's it's not giving us one 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 and various stuff which is really helpful when trying to organize this when you're not getting it in order and we do mention all the time that there are no page numbers why not um, STC came before the Horus Heresy, so the order is correct in the folder. Yeah, it's true, but uh, it's also about you know is should the Horus Heresy be the first your first introduction into 40k in general? That, that's just what I mean. It kind of sets the scene. You know, if you think about the history, it sets the scene of the 41st millennium, and then starts talking about the warp and so on, and then and then STCs, and then goes back to the Horus Heresy. I thought it might. I I thought it would tell you about the forty first millennium, and and then how did we get here? The Horus Heresy, and then we can start talking about things like the warp and the STC systems and stuff. But you know, again, I haven't actually read through this yet because it's not complete, and so you're going to be jumping anyway. But um, it's just I, I think when I'm teaching people about forty k, it's kind of tell them how it is and tell them how it got there, and then start expanding into the various other parts of the uh, fluff. But anyway, war zones, yep, yeah, Ultramar. Uh, and then we skip all the rest of the war zones um, for everything, so I'm not sure what else we're going to be getting. Because, but again, we're only a quarter of the way through the uh, through the um, collection now, so we'll see what else we get. And then we head into battles. Now, I know that the battles is actually quite full. We have the battle for Luna, battles number one. And battles number two for Torovar. Number three for Nova Thulium. Number four, the defense of Valius. 
Uh, number five, the fall of Sparos. Now I noticed that the uh, the it does keep um, it doesn't always follow the same format when you're reading the uh, the book. So I, I have mentioned before about this box isn't always there. Uh, battle number six, number seven, number eight, number nine. There we are, number nine. So we got nine battles in there so far, which is kind of cool. And then we have the various factions. We're going into factions here, which is uh, factions number one, which is the Imperium of Man. Most of what people will see first. 1.1, it gives us the hierarchy of you know, the Imperium of Man. Um... I just had to double check that one. 1 1.2 is missing, so I'm not sure what could possibly go there. But we have the Imperium in space at 1.3. Um, factions number two, of course, is the Chaos Gods, which is you know almost the direct adversary of man, as well as everything else in the universe. But uh, the Chaos Gods are a big deal. So we have a look through Nurgle at 2.1 and then it skips to Space Marine Chapters. Now we know that there will probably be 2.1, uh, 2.2, 2.3 and 2.4 of course. Nurgle, Zinch, Korn and Slanesh which are obviously here. Um, so we will have um, a little bit of fluff on all four of those. And, uh, and of course we will no doubt if they're doing uh, factions um, I imagine towards the end, once they've kind of given us all the information they possibly can about Ultramarines and Death Guard, um, that's when the magazines, towards the end, I would say maybe the last quarter, will start going into things like the Orcs, the Eldar, and the various fluff that goes along with those as well. I won't expect to see that filled, this section filled up until at least the second half, maybe even towards the last quarter of the collection to be honest with you but we're moving on to section number two which is the space marines um and the the, the section two and three is basically space marines and death guard um and i imagine the space marines will probably be fuller uh, just generally because of all the chapters that would come in and speaking of which space marine chapters number one and it gives us the fluff of the Space Marines itself and uh, the Thousand Chapters, which is kind of giving us a little bit of a glimpse of the fact that Space Marines come in every shade of colour under the sun. And a little bit of fluff about how to make them. And the Codex, which is what we just uh, had into 1.2. And then we've got 1.3, 1.4, 1.5 don't exist. So I'm not sure... Because we've gone from the, the, the Codex Astartes onto Honor Badges, so there could be all sorts of stuff in between those. Um, so that's 1.6, and then no doubt we might have... I have no idea. Because War Gear is at the end, so I don't know what else we're going to have in there. Uh, apart from just a breakdown of all the various chapters you could possibly think of. You know, starting with the nine loyal chapters. Uh, and we move on to, oh no, Space Marine Chapters number 2 is still here, which is about the Ultramarines here. Um, and the Ultramarine successor, successor Chapters, starting with the Silver Templars. 2.1, all of these guys, now we had one of these already, which was this one. This one, no, this one was already here. I think this one is the one we got today. Can't remember now. <laughs> I've only just opened it, I can't remember. So lots of Successor Chapters. Uh, 2.3 is talking about the Ultraman. I did put them in the right order, didn't I? Yeah, 2.1. So we haven't got 2.2. We have 2.2. Yeah, so we haven't got 2.2 yet. It could just be more successes. Or, or perhaps a, a force organization of the Ultramarines. Because I know that that could be interesting uh, to see what the entire chapter looks like. Uh, we have some of the uh, colors here uh, further back. Uh, but we don't have one of the uh, the classic uh, force organization chart that we often get in the codexes. Uh, Space Marine Chapters 2.3, which is obviously telling us about the realm of Ultramar. And uh, of what they control. And their ship, Honor of Ultramar, which is what we're fighting on, I believe, on in the missions. Uh, and then moving on, here we go, Space Marines number three, which is telling us about the Silver Templars, which were created for conquest, as far as I'm aware. Yet. Um, 
so yeah we'll talk about so and then here we go so we've got silver templars chapter organization so they've got the various company colors and then the squad numbers so they have their squads in um what's well, so it this is what i'm talking about the organization basically so they've got the various roles as well just to give you the outline about how to paint these guys if that's what you want to do and the various ranks as well and then we move on to heroes so we've skipped we've got ultramarines and we've got silver templars other than that we have got a whole host of um canon chapters that could end up in here theoretically we'll have all of the loyal ones and some of the more story is some of the more chapters that have got more stories about them in here And then moving on to the various heroes, we start straight in at number three. Uh, there is going to be a captain coming soon in the books, which I would imagine will be number one. Um, we have a lieutenant already, but um, so I'm not sure. Um, we needed. To, we've got chaplain, we've got apothecary, and we've got captains that need to go in here at some point. They're the HQ units, um, so we'll see. But I mean, we start at number three with the librarian. And number five is the lieutenant. So yeah, we go straight through. Uh, five point one is Lieutenant Calcius himself. Uh, we could end up having a few more named lieutenants and various stuff coming in here, uh, possibly from other chapters. It would be nice. Um, and then moving on to the warriors of themselves. So we have the intercessors at number one, which are the regular troop choices. Crimson Eagle, thank you for joining us. We're just going through the folder um, of the Conquest magazine and seeing how it's shaping up after 20 issues. Um, number two is the Reavers. I mean, I don't think that there is any specific order as to why they've put these in this order. Uh, number three being the Aggressors. Um, I mean, obviously, most of these units we've got with the magazine, so it kind of gives us um, some fluff about how they what they're like um warriors number four number five the inceptors and we will have uh, scouts tactical marines i think i did just find the uh, poster that had um the information the picture of what we're getting i did find this just now uh so we are going to be getting some scouts uh, somewhere down here somewhere um we're not going to get any regular marines but we're probably going to be getting some um pages on them probably we have bikers we have land speeders and stuff so we'll probably see some of these things so we shall see um and moving on into the war gear funnily enough you know the um warriors number one was the intercessors yet war gear number one is the reavers which you know that seems a bit weird to me it doesn't seem like the war gear has any kind of order as to why it's putting in it. It's just like, oh, here's a war gear page and just put the next number on it. Because the next one is power weapons. Um, and then force weapons, which is number three. Number four is the inceptor war gear. And we still haven't got a page on bolters until number five. Which is bizarre because, I mean, a bolt, a, a bolt weapon is like the, the first weapon you get if you're a space marine so it's a little bit bizarre but we do have plenty of fluff on all of the different types and then moving on to the death guards um so you know start first of all talking about who they are and the organization of the death guard which is handy um moving on to the colors that they come in which i haven't really taken much notice of but i do remember that death legion 3 Death Guard Legion 3, Death Guard Legion 3, there are three pages of Death Guard Le Legion 3, and then it goes into the Tainted Sons. Now, you could possibly, depending on how this read, find that these, uh, Death Guard Legion 3.1, uh, we could get some more of those, and these pages could follow the order in which they're written in the Colors of Contagion. Tainted Sons, the Feasted Ones, whatever, Putrid Core, Choir, uh, Glooming Lords, perhaps, but are we going to get some for every single one of them? I have no idea. So, we shall have to see about that. 
Um, but yeah, we have a little bit of a chat about the Tainted Suns themselves. I think mine are probably painted as much close to Tainted Suns, so that's probably the ones that I use. I haven't really decided on mine. Uh, you can see pictures of mine on Instagram and stuff um, of what I've done, so maybe you can tell me. Death Guard Legion 4 is the Outbreaks of War, so basically we have another map of the Imperium and where they're scattered around the various parts of the um, universe. And then so we go, we skip number five, no idea what that could be, um, and into the icons of Nurgle, um, followed the tri scars, the legion symbol, and the trilobe icons. Lots of three. Um, is is Nurgle's number number three? Is that what it is? I can't remember exactly. Um, is that his number? Um, I wonder if we can find that nice and quickly. Uh, it'll probably be under the gods. Maybe somebody can tell me in the chat. Is uh, is the uh, is the number for Nurgle the the number three? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, we have the Plague Planet itself, which is the Death Guard domain. So therefore, oh, it's number seven. Oh, okay, fair enough. So I have no idea why it's all threes. I have no idea. Um, so we have the Plague Planet, which gives us um, a, 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 a description as to you know the filthy place that they live. Um, Death Guard Champions number three, so we don't have the de um, Champions number one nor number two. Um, uh, Lord of Contagion. I don't know what we're going to get, and I mean also domains is literally one page long so far. Um, I'm sure that will be filled out eventually over some time. Um, the Death Guard Champions number three. I'm not sure what other champions we might get. Uh, because we have 3.1, which is Lord Feltius, which we had the discussion last week about the uh, Lords of Contagion. I do have one fully painted, which is uh, this this guy here, um, and we received this guy last week. Um, so they're both the Lord of Contagion, only this one doesn't have a name, but this one does. So um, Death Guard Champion number five. So again, we've skipped number four. Um, and going on to the Foul Blight Spawn, which is what we've already got. Uh, dinner time, back soon if you're still live. We're probably not going to be much longer, because we're probably only going to have a look through the fluff, and then have a look through the um, through the missions. But uh, we'll see. But uh, enjoy your dinner, Wayne. Um, so number five is the Foul Blight Spawn, uh, and then number six the Biologist Putrefire, which is going through some of the HQ units that we've got now, and then going into the Warriors themselves, which we have so far Plague Marines, and we have Poxwalkers, and some more Poxwalkers. Now, I'm not sure why Plague Marines only got one page of Poxwalkers, got two. Uh, the Warriors is Blight for number three, Blight Lord Terminators. And we could perhaps have another quick look at the page here to kind of ascertain what other models, what other, uh, what others we could get. And to be honest, we have some chaos, um, the chaos cultists here. They might get a page in this book as well. Um, are we really going to get some of these captains and stuff or regular terminators? Um, I know that the cohort is blight hall. Light Lord Terminators, but what about the other guys? I'm not really sure. There is a ton of Poxwalkers at the back there. I do not think we have not had all of the Poxwalkers that we're going to be getting yet. Um, I believe we're going to get two more lots of Poxwalkers. Um, we have some Chaos um, Demon things here. They're, I can't remember what they're called Chaos Spawn or something, so we'll have a look at that. But there's not a huge amount of variety for the Death Guard, to be fair. So we might get one more page here for the Chaos Cultists, perhaps. Um, and then we have the War Machines. Number one, the Mephitic Blight Hauler, which is the first one we got, which I have done a video on. And you can see me painting all of that. Um, and we also have um, the yeah, some more of the Blight Hauler, still number one. And uh, yeah, so we again we're gonna have we have a uh, a chaos rhino which we'll get a page for. 
we have a foul blight drone or whatever that's called uh, and a plague burst crawler as well so they will have another two three pages perhaps added to here and then obviously going on to the war gear we have the blight grenades the biologists putrefies themselves uh, deaths heads and grenadiers lots of grenades but not really any we don't have a page for the um the blight launcher is that what it's called um so any of that so there's still plenty of death guard fluff to come i think um there's a lot of space marine fluff in here at the minute um so yeah that's uh, that's what we've got so far in the fluff now of course i could go through the build section but honestly um it's just every page is literally just as you get your models it's this is how to build it just separated by space marines um so you got space marines you got space marine yeah it goes from one to six then you have space marine heroes which i threw at the back um just just so it's out of the way uh, and then the death guard and then um and then the scenery so i mean it's not really uh there's not really anything to talk about that because if you've been getting the magazine you've also been getting the uh getting the what's it now i have for some reason got scenery number one scenery number three i've got two lots of scenery number one and uh and scenery number three so when they uh sent me out a book when they put my book together they gave me two scenery number ones which again it doesn't matter because like i said scenery number one scenery number three they are identical um, literally the only different no not even the picture is any different so I mean they're genuinely yeah so we will skip that now the painting guide has been giving people a bit of trouble because how do you want to uh, place this uh, and so basically I kind of had a look it over here they say paint and it's base and so I've done those in the order that we got the got the um, got them paints in so we got Paint bases, lead belcher, paint bugman's glow, um, which is just you know base paints. Uh, then we have paint with shade uh, in the order we got them, which was actually both at exactly the same time, and just putting them in an order so that they read okay. Um, shading with non oil, shading with agro exer shade, and that was pretty much it. Painting fine details with your uh, racker, fresh mephiston red, and mechanica standard grey. So that goes after that painting the big fine details once we got through those it just tells you how to actually paint and then we just go through space marines one through to whatever number it's at um let's have a look here because i managed to find it pretty quickly space marines number six yep there we go space marines from one through six and then death guards one through probably six as well no nope. Death Guard 1 through 8, um, and then the scenery, which is 1, 2, and 3. Simple as that, really. It's not really much to look at there. And then, basically, what I've actually done, um, I did actually have this the wrong way around when I did the 10th uh, episode rundown, which was I had split all of the books from the tutorial part into uh, and the mission part and then what i realized is actually um, the tutorial goes alongside the mission that you're learning so tutorial number one is about how to play which was basically just the one page in the in the back of the first issue but then tutorial number two was about how to move your model uh, and that follows on to tutorial number three about shooting so you've got moving and shooting and then your first battle only has moving and shooting in it so and then you replay that first mission with a few extra rules maybe an objective or two uh and then you go into tutorial number four which was you know you're charging so you move shoot now you can charge and then because you've charged you get overwatch and you also fight um and then so with the reavers and the plague marines that's that mission so I kind of had to go back and um, take out all of the missions that I had separated, which I had separated tutorial number uh, four and number five, and had them next to tutorial number two and number three. 
um, leaving uh, mission number one and replay mission number one and mission number two and replay mission number two next to each other but that didn't work when you were trying to actually read through how to play so the mission at the back of the book pretty much just goes in the folder as it is in the magazine and that is exactly the same way all the way through the book right the way to the end um, because there are some pages that actually ironically um, you've got a tutorial about let's say characters you'll read here uh, about characters and then you'll then read here and it will carry on talking across the pages um, whereas I thought originally that the missions were separate from the tutorials so yeah other than that um, that is pretty much all the way through the book and we've pretty much gone through that and of course we have um, we have the data sheets at the back now if we have a look at the codex here we have the tutorials we have the rules and then we have Space Marines and Death Guard now Space Marines and Death Guard are your data sheets at the back Space Marines and Death Guard the rules is interesting and I think we're going to actually start getting these now in here. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to start getting almost pages from the rule book. And they're going to go in between the tutorials, which is what we've already got, uh, just before the data sheets. Which essentially a data sheet is basically the codex. So we're basically going to be getting a Death Guard codex and a Space Marine codex. Although they won't be complete because we won't actually have... We have a look at the picture again these are not all of the models available to space marines nor are they available for not everything that's available for death guard um, there are other models available so you will have to buy the codex if you want to improve your army however we are going to get some rules and i think you'll notice that none of these none of these pages yet have rules they are all tutorials there are no rules in there at all and i imagine once you start playing on a large big board these rules will also include the actual narrative play missions and the uh, matched play missions and various other things like that start giving you rules that you would actually find out in the wild so the missions that you'll find in the wild especially when if i grab it very very quickly <coughs> which is up here the actual 40k rule book because in this book the book pretty much reads like the um, like the folders will we have a ton of fluff in the beginning especially uh, you may have noticed as it flicked past we we've got the chaos gods there and we also have plenty of pictures of various models um, and we have the various legions. We even have uh, Deptus Mechanicus here, which we haven't had anything yet. The Astra Militarum, the Blood Angels, and we have a thousand chapters, which might look familiar with the various chapters um, pictured in the book. And then if we have a look further back, um, if we go to the rules here, um, so in, in the next issue, you're going to get the core rules which is a little A5 folding thing and it will basically be word for word identical to this just in a slightly smaller format um, but then after you've gone through those rules which is only a few pages long that's the rules that's on the back of the leaflet I believe you have not that moving on open play yeah so you can figure out these are the extra rules the uh, various other missions that you can play narrative play and we have these missions in the book stratagems which we haven't even considered yet in uh, in 40 in uh, conquest and we have other missions armies tactical objectives on all of these extra rules the advanced rules the uh, how to uh, actually put an army together and uh, various other um rules planet strike here different missions and all that sort of thing those sorts of things will probably all be in that rules section there now of course you'll probably want to get one of these eventually 
if you are collecting Conquest as a new player, but it just means that while it's in this format, you can learn it week by week rather than having a thumping great book that thick. Admittedly, half of it is fluff. Uh, having a thumping great book that you then have to try and flick your way through to try and figure out how to play the game. You're going to get a rule on top of a rule each and every week. But uh, yeah, so you'll notice all of that is just tutorials at the minute for the last 20 weeks so far. And uh, perhaps next week we will start seeing rule pages and we will certainly have the... Um, the uh, the small core rule leaflet. So that's that. There we go. So that's your twenty. That's the twenty issue rundown of uh, Warhammer Conquest. What do we think? How are we thinking? How is it looking? Um, do we have any um, questions? Uh, I know that there was uh, some breaks during that uh, where it cut out and it wasn't streaming properly. So feel free. Let me know. Um, do you have any questions? Is there anything you want to um, ask? Any of your... Um, uh, what's the word? Predictions. What are we going to get? Are we going to get other chapters? Are we going to see uh, things that... Uh, you know, what, what are we going to see? I'll be interested to hear what you have to say before I end the show, because I will end it re relatively soon. So uh, what do we think? Either way, I mean, it's been a pleasure uh, collecting these books so far. I mean, Hatchet is a very difficult company to work with. Um, they can make life a little bit difficult to uh, actually... Um, yeah, let me bring that back a bit. There we go. Uh, they, we, they can make it a bit difficult to actually <laughs> deal with them sometimes. So, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting the end of them. And I don't know when the next folder is going to be, but essentially this one is now full. Um, so, Wayne, you're back. Welcome. Hatchet are rubbish indeed. Yeah, they are. They're terrible. Um, but yeah, I, I'm enjoying the folders. I mean, you're certainly getting a lot of money to bang for your buck. You know, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. It's a, it's a pleasure buying these miniatures at such a cheap price. A bit difficult putting them mildly. I think a bit difficult would be giving it the PG-13 uh, reaction to it. But I tell you what, I've done a lot of talking. My throat's hurting tonight. But, um, yeah, I mean, what do we think as well? The other thing, as I would say, is what do we think about the um, folder rundown? Um, you know, is it worth doing this in another 10 issues time? Now, obviously, we're in another 10 issues time... We should have more fluff, and obviously everything we've already got will flick through again, uh, as well as whatever we get added to the fluff section uh, for the next 20 episodes, as well as what happens to the rule section. Um, so shall we do this again in 10 episodes time, uh, when we hit 30 uh, magazines? And... Um, let me know your thoughts on the magazine itself. Is, uh, do you think you're getting your money's worth? Um, the premium subscription is a little bit... Mm, I'm not sure whether it's worth it. Now, obviously, for the channel, I'll carry on getting it so that you can see exactly what's in it. Um, the free gifts. We still haven't finished all of the free gifts. We've got um, another set of brushes to come for subscribers. Um... And uh, I do know as well, I have seen it somewhere now. I can't remember where I saw it exactly. Uh, and so it is a rumor. Good evening, Mark. We're just kind of rounding up the end of the video, but feel free to ask questions before we leave. Um, it is only a rumor, but another book. I don't know how much it's going to cost, but probably another $14.99. Uh, maybe on its way to subscribers um, that is about the Silver Templars. So, money's worth. Mag, not really. Minis, hell yeah. Premium, hell no. Um, well, I think the mag and the minis kind of go hand in hand. So, I mean, without the mag, there wouldn't be the minis at this price. So, 
I would say, yeah, the the magazine itself is worth it. Um, is it worth subscribing to it for the extra gifts you're getting? Yes, but because you're not really paying any extra for a regular subscription, but you do then have to deal with Hatchet. Uh, the premium, yeah, I don't agree. Yeah, I agree with you there. I mean, it's not really worth it, but we'll have a look to see what we get in the next premium delivery. That's annoying. Hope not. Hatchet money grabbing again. Unfortunately, I, it's a rumour, but I did see it. And I mean, the Silver Templars are supposedly created for conquest so it will be a ma it will be a book that won't be available anywhere else it will have theoretically pictures and fluff about the silver templars as a chapter so um, estimating at the end we will save around 200 ish from retail price that is around about right yeah there is actually on on the internet somewhere i can't remember exactly where there is a um a Kirioff TV did a rundown, uh, uh, did a video about the value of conquest in, um, it was in video form because he saw it written down somewhere on a blog. I can't remember where it is, but check out Kirioff TV and he did a video to tell you exactly how much you're saving. It's not completely correct because what they didn't take into account is um, the box sets that we're actually getting the models from. Um, for argument's sake, most of the models that we received at the beginning were from No No Fear box set. Um, so rather than checking out, I mean, they do have Plague Marines in them, uh, Pushfit Plague Marines and Pushfit uh, Intercessors and Pushfit Reavers, I think. Um, but if you work out how much a Pushfit Plague Marine and a Pushfit Reaver costs, it's about £10 for three from Games Workshop. But then if you actually buy the no no fear box um, you'd probably be able to save some extra money there so you'd have to you would have to do a bit of math trying to work out exactly where the boxes came from as well as later on when we start getting the bikers and the uh, land speeder for sure they were revel kits uh, the uh, GW wants to let revel do at one point so you know there's gonna be you know I'm not 100% sure exactly but you are definitely saving a decent amount of money um, for the the models themselves uh you forgot about the free gifts there okay yeah we have as far as i'm aware we have one more free gift delivery coming and i think it's the next delivery uh where we will be getting some uh brushes that are not available to you know people that buy it from a shop um in fact you know i do have the thing here um we will be getting let's have a look here um no, they're the starter brush, the layer brush, the base brush, and the dry brush. What you get with the magazine. Ah, here we go. And we will be getting um, a, a large shade brush. It could be a large base brush. Um, it's a small layer brush by the looks of it, and possibly a wash brush. Um, uh, are you sure about Revel doing kits? I, I've seen them. I've seen them. I can't remember where they are, but I, I'm pretty sure it's Revel that ha that were um, you you could buy them from shops such as Game, um, and they were uh, I believe there were three bikers you could buy, uh, a land speeder, and I believe they also did um, some orcs, uh, possibly not not like a full squad of boys, but like three knobs or something that you could buy. Um, and you could buy them from like game stores. Um, um, so yeah, they were definitely Revel, and I think they're out of print in Revel now because Revel aren't allowed to do it anymore, as far as I'm aware. But um, I have seen them, and I've seen them on eBay as well that you can buy Revel Revel GW kits. Well, Revel Space Marine bikers. Um, so yeah, we have. Um, oh, here we go. We have a base, a layer, and dry brushes. Um, a large dry brush perhaps, a large base brush and a small layer brush as opposed to the, um, what are we going to get? Um, no, that's a large dry brush. Alright, I have no idea what brushes. We're, we're going to get some brushes anyway. Um, <coughs> uh, oh, you're okay. Surprised GW did that. They, they, it's at some point, probably around about you know the end of the 90s, the early 90s, that they allowed Revel to 
Probably as they were trying to expand, getting more people into it. I have no idea. Maybe trying to break into the um, the model boat people and the model plane people. Um, bringing these out. But uh, yeah. So we do have another gift. I, I do keep trying to look to see. I do have it here. I really should have a look at the... Um, I think I've got issue number one knocking about. I may have an issue number one tucked away somewhere. Um, because I did have some where I might still have the card that you use to um, <coughs> that you use to um, subscribe in the first place but uh, we have exclusive subscription gifts and free issue which obviously was right at the beginning uh, the model clippers the easy use plastic glue and the mold line remover that were just rubbish um, the binder and dividers um, the painting handle we've already had uh, Space Marine Chapters Postal, which we received, I believe it was the last issue. And then the base layer and dry brushes, which I believe are like in a... F uh, not, the ish not the delivery coming, but the delivery after that. So the new binder might be this delivery, but I, I have no idea exactly. You were working for GW at the time, and didn't, you didn't mention it, you didn't mention, don't remember it. No, I mean, I've seen them, but I don't know when they were. You've got one or two issue knocking around. Basically, I was just trying to see if I could find out where it was written um, when we're going to get the, the the free gifts. I know it's written on the website at some point. I just wonder if I could just read it on the uh, on the show now, but um, I can't see it. Um, and there'll be four exclusive premium kits. We've already had one of them um, after. I can't remember which delivery it was, number five or something. So we'll probably get some of those in the future as well, which of course I will do for the channel as well. Um, other than that, I don't really think there's much else to talk about. Um, but yeah, what do we think about the um, the uh, ten episode breakdown? Is it worth doing it again? And uh, after we receive, after we do issue number thirty, what do you think? Let me know. Uh, don't forget, you can always send me a message to any of the social media links in the description below. Uh, don't forget, over in the other side there, you can copy down that link underneath my Discord name. Uh, discord.gg forward slash what 6GAQZHP whatever copy it down or check out the discord link in the chat or in the description below um, to come along and join us on discord and of course you can always support the channel via the patreon link other than that I think that's a good show I've done so much talking <coughs> my, uh, my throat is getting sore so uh, I'm going to end the show here uh, Patreons, if you want, you can come and join me on uh, the Patreon after show chat in just a few minutes. Um, but other than that, I will pretty much I will leave Wayne to do all of the chat, all of the chat links, and I will say thank you for watching this one, and I will catch you in the next one. All right, guys, Tara.